A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Have you checked out Flemish Wood already? My woodworking channel posting regularly over there. Link in the description. I would highly appreciate it if you could support the channel a bit by giving a bit of few time to it by watching my first bigger projects that I posted over there. Also you can see the design process of um, the products that I sell on stemmerge.eu there for example. So definitely make sure to check it out. So a while back I posted this video about integrals with huge <laughs> conversion problems. And <laughs> what a terrible video. I really didn't like it, but never mind. It's out there and a lot of people have seen it. So you can be satisfied with everything you post on YouTube all the time. And there was this one in Tegaral, namely the one um, of the cosine, of the cosine, of the cosine, blah blah blah, of x up until infinity integrated with respect to x. Now what we did is we said, okay, if we take a look at this integrand right here, we are going to do a little substitution. Namely, you are going to notice if y is equal to the cosine of the cosine blah 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 of x. Then what we got here on the inside, since we got infinitely many nested cosines, this is just y yet again. Meaning we can substitute y and then we are going to get that y is equal to the cosine of y. Now, I said in this video that this fact is pretty surprising that there does exist a constant which satisfies this fixed point equation. And this is unusual in the sense because the cosine of one, normal case if you take a look at its Taylor series expansion, you're going to get that this is one and then we are going to get minus y squared over two factorial plus dot 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 higher powers. And if you compare these two, you're going to notice there is no y in here. There is a y missing, but we get a y on this side. And it's pretty surprising, at least in my opinion, that this fixed point equation does have a solution. And the solution to this equation is called Dotti's number, which we are going to basically calculate today, you could say. We are going to find out a closed expression to calculate numerically, you can do it in any other way possible, Dotti's number. And for this, we are going to take a look at this equation, cosine of x being equal to x. And to solve this equation, which is not trivial, not e even in the least bit, we are going to make use of the Lagrange inversion theorem. Link down there in the description for an introduction. This is what it says. <laughs> and don't be scared, it's not so scary, okay? So, we are going to define ourselves a function f. And we want this function to be analytic. Analytic means on the one hand infinitely often differentiable, but this is not the only condition that needs to hold. F being analytic means we need to be able to expand it into a formal power series. If this holds at a certain x0 element of the complex numbers and if our derivative of our function f evaluated at the point x0 is not equal to zero, then the inverse of our function f is given by this huge expression. I said in the video that you can derive this from the residue theorem. I didn't derive it in the video, it's a mouthful, okay? But you can probably check out some complex anal um, literature to find out the derivation of this thing. It's not too hard actually. Now we are going to make use of this abomination of a theorem to get our job done, to find out what Dotti's number actually is. And for this job to be done, what we need at first, if we go through this definition, is we need some function f. And we need to see if it's analytic at some x0 element of the complex numbers. Let us define a certain function f of x at first. Now, we are going to deal with this equation. And what we are going to do now is we are going to subtract x on both sides. It really doesn't matter if you subtract x on both sides or the cosine of x, really doesn't matter. For simplification purposes, we are going to bring x to the other side, leaving us with cosine of x minus x is equal to zero on the one hand. But what we are going to do is, we are going to define our function f of x to be the difference of the cosine of x and x. Now we are going to define this to be f of x. And what we wanna do is, we wanna get ourselves the inverse function f inverse at the point zero and this is going to give us the x value which is going to solve this equation. This is everything that's behind Lagrange inversion theorem and this is extremely powerful. So now we define ourselves the function f of x. Next thing that we need to do is 
we need to see if this function is analytical and we are really lucky. Now, analytic functions, just imagine it to be a Taylor series expansion. If we take a look at this polynomial right here, polynomials are their own Taylor series expansion. The zero coefficient is just going to vanish in the definition of the formal power series and everything after the first coefficient is also going to be just equal to zero, meaning x is its own power series expansion. Now cosine of x, we know that we can expand this into a power series expansion and the best thing is, since it's defined as being the real part of the complex exponential function, we also know that it's analytic everywhere. It has an infinite radius of convergence. I showed this in another video, link down there in the description. So we got the difference of an analytic function and an analytic function. As mentioned before, imagine it like being Taylor series expansions. This is a Taylor series minus another Taylor series. The difference of two analytic functions is also analytic. And the best thing is, this also has an infinite radius of convergence. Now this is good. So we found ourselves an analytic function and the best thing is it's analytic at each and every x naught. It's analytic everywhere, it has an infinite radius of convergence. You can very easily show this. Okay, so it really doesn't matter what our x naught right now is. No matter what it is, it's going to be analytic. So we are going to leave the x naught for later. Okay, we are going to see where we are going to evaluate our inverse function at at a later point in time. Now, we need to see if our function, the derivative of it, it at x naught is not equal to zero. For this, what we are going to do is we are just going to differentiate it. The inverse function, okay, uh, not the inverse function, the derivative of f is going to be cosine of x is going to turn into negative the sine of x. And x differentiated is 1, so negative 1. So we don't want this to be equal to 0 for some x0 being plugged into here. So we need to restrain our x0 a tiny little bit because for certain values of x0, it could also happen that the derivative is equal to 0. For which x0? Well, obviously, when sine of x0 turns into negative 1, this always happens when we have something of the form, let's go for sine of x, this is 1 at power over 2, 3 power over 2, and then 5, 7 power over 2, and so on. We don't want the sine of x0 to get values of this kind, this x0. This is not something that we want. So by choosing x0 later, we need to be careful when it comes to the derivative evaluated at this certain spot. Okay, thus far, that's good. But if we choose any or value for x0, where this condition holds, for example, pa or pa over two, then we are pretty good to go. Then we don't run in any kind of problems. And now, if this holds, we are good to go. We can evaluate our inverse function at and this time zero, because this right here is going to solve our e equation such that we can get our Dotti's number out. This is what it's called. Meaning, if all of the conditions hold, then the inverse function, evaluate at zero, is called Dotti's number. Dotti's number in normal case will be denoted with a small r. <laughs> Very creative. It's going to be equal to, okay, taking a look at Lagrange inversion theorem, we are going to get x naught at first and then plus the infinite series where n is greater or equal to 1 of the limit as x approaches our x0 of the derivative in x, the n minus 1 one derivative of. And now what we are going to get in parentheses here is something to the nth power, but what is the something? x minus x0 divided by f of x minus f evaluated at x0. Let's plug all of the information in that we got right here. So in numerator x minus x0 divided by our f of x is the cosine x minus x and negative f of x0 is going to give us what we got right here just with the signs turned around and x0 plugged in. Meaning this is going to give us negative cosine of x0 plus x0 and all of this to the nth power. And all of this will also be multiplied by, and now we need to be careful, because we are going to evaluate our inverse function at zero to get Dotti's number out. So we get zero minus and then f of x naught. Meaning this is just what we got right here and then to the nth power. Meaning this is x naught minus the cosine of x naught 
to the nth power divided by n factorial. I know, this looks rather terrible at the moment. I totally agree with that. But now we can make our lives a bit easier by choosing an appropriate x0 such that a lot of stuff is going to vanish. And don't forget, x0 shall not be of the form um, 3 power over 2 and so on. Now, which x0 could do the trick, for example, and which one could make our expression a bit easier? One of the x naughts that we could choose is for example one where our cosine of x naught is going to vanish. When is cosine of x equal to zero? Exactly at pi over 2 for example. Why not choose x naught to be equal to pi over 2, plug all of the values into here, all of the cosines are going to vanish and then we are going to end up with a hopefully <laughs> easier equation overall. Meaning if we said x0 to be equal to pi over 2. Then we are going to get that our inverse function, the value added to, to 0, is equal to Dotty's number, which is going to be equal to 1, Taylor series expansion, and this one is going to be a value added at pi over 2. Now we are going to plug all the pi over 2s in. Pi over 2 plus, and now we are going to get the infinite series, n greater or equal to 1, of the limit as x approaches, and now our x0 is pi over 2. Then we are going to get the derivative, the n minus 1 in x of. And now we are going to plug everything in. x minus x naught is going to give us x minus pi over 2. Down here in the denominator what we are going to get is, okay, cosine of x minus x, cosine of x naught is going to vanish, but we need a pi over 2 down here. Meaning what we are going to get is the cosine of x minus x and then we are going to get plus pi over 2. I'm going to get rid of this part right here real quick, just to make um, seeing a bit easier. Then to the nth power. And our cool thing is, this part right here is going to vanish in the process. Then we are going to get par over 2 to the nth power, meaning what we are going to get down here is par to the nth power divided by 2 to the nth power times n factorial. This right here is our, yeah, Dottie's number, basically. And it's, it's terrible. Computationally speaking, it's an absolute mess to evaluate <laughs> Dottie's number in any kind of way. It's, it's definitely not fun. But one cool thing that you can rearrange here is that 2 to the nth power times n factorial is the same as n double factorial. Okay, you can check for yourself that this is the case, making the whole thing a bit easier. One thing that Wikipedia is going to state, which is also a pretty cool fact, is that our integrant basically, our summons that we got right here in the Taylor series expansion are of the form sum constant, okay, because it's going to be evaluated at some point, some constant a n, which is going to be a sequence times power to the nth power, meaning Dottie's number in some way is going to be equal to power over 2 plus the infinite series that we got right here, power to the nth power times some a n which looks a bit more tame, but if you know what a n is, then all of this is going to be um, pretty terrible overall. But yeah, this is Dottie's number, and Dottie's number is going to converge very, very, very slowly to this value. And on Wolfram Math World and the like, you can find a few cool relationships regarding Dottie's number, for example, this one. Um, basically combining Dottie's number, the exponential function, also the gamma function, where you added 5 or something, giving you this value, which is pretty cool if you ask me. It's a nice coincidence. It's a so-called almost integer. But yeah, this is just a cool connection between, um, between a lot of transcendental things and yeah, Dottie's number. Um, I'm not certain if this thing right here is irrational or the like. Um, maybe you can double check once again on Wikipedia. But this is all I want to cover for today. Sometimes in mathematics, it's just not nice what you get out. But at least we can find the closed expression in form of a Taylor series expansion, which is not bad overall. You can do it computationally, even though it converges very slowly. And if you are interested in more mathematics that we did today, Taylor series expansions, derivative, complex numbers, and the like, then I invite you to try out the content of today's sponsor Brian who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Dottie's number, never thought about it, sounds kind of weird. But um, if you take a look at the mathematics that we did today, it's pretty overwhelming, at least to beginners. So we got these derivatives in here, Papa Flemmy turned it into partial derivatives, which isn't even needed, but um, really doesn't matter if you are in one dimension. And then we also got limits and the Taylor series expansion full of crazy stuff. And to make sense of mathematics like this, it really needs a lot of practice. I had a lot of practice too. 
I wasn't at the point of solving something like this like five years ago. No way I could have solved something like this out of my head for example. But lucky for us there are a lot of cool resources out there and one of the resources that I would present to you today is Sprint.org, a website and also a mobile app you can learn something new on the go which is going to provide you with some of the best online learning content out there on the internet. And this is my honest opinion. I'm using Brilliant on a weekly basis. I like to show Brilliant to my students in class to learn something about geometry, just number theory, elementary one, prime factorization. It's a very good source to learn all things STEM, starting from mathematics, physics, over to computer sciences, even philosophy and search engines. It's so good. And the strongest point about Brilliant are definitely their interactive courses. You can interact with graphics, levels and the like on their website to really get a hang and the intuition behind abstract concepts like group theory, um, functional analysis, linear algebra. Whatever you can think of, Print got something up their sleeve for you. And if this feels like something for you, if you feel like learning something new each and every day, then I definitely invite you to try out Brilliant today by using the link at the top of the description brilliant.org slash flammablemass. With it you are going to get, hear me out, free access to a big portion of Brilliant already, but even more important than that, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is a freaking great deal considering how much content they have available on their website. And they are just adding increasingly better courses each and every month and I can't believe how they can even improve on their current courses all the time. They are so crazy. They are posting such good content and you should try it out for yourself too. If you want to support the channel a bit, then definitely make sure to become a Patreon supporter or go over to Flemmy's Wood and make me monetize the channel. <laughs> I want to get my money back for all the tools I bought. Hell, there was a lot of money. But never mind, woodworking is fun. Check it out and support the channel this way. Also, don't forget to check out stimmage.eu. You can get handcrafted products over there like my headphone stands and also the 10 secretaries that I'm selling. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Please stay safe. Ciao.